Do we have a head? Maybe, maybe not. This is the Sam Harris reading list. This is the last coffee house. We are reading On Having No Head by Douglas Harding, an English philosophical writer, mystic, and spiritual teacher. The subtitle is Zen and the Rediscovery of the Obvious. The book was, he wrote uh, several books. When was this book published? Apparently it was made into a very short movie as well. <laughs> I don't know when it was published. I didn't write it down. It's published sometime. The contents. I don't have the slightest goddamn idea what this book is about. The author. It's nonfiction, as far as I am aware. The author goes on a Himalayan discovery. He realizes that he doesn't have a head. What organ he used to make this determination, I am not sure. He starts following the headless way. He tries to tell people about the headless way, but it doesn't work particularly well. The result of this realization is that burdens start falling away. He finds solace. Well, not even necessarily solace. He just turns to... Maybe not even turns to. It's just... <laughs> He practices Zen Buddhism and discusses Zen Buddhism. Talks about how it's very difficult and it's nearly impossible for Westerners. He was a Westerner from England. But he did it. He nailed it. He makes some passing references to science. How we don't really see with our eyes. That it goes through a whole bunch of other things before we get to our eyes. Because it's a complicated system, our seeing. It doesn't go just bam through the eyes, straight into the recognition of what we're seeing kind of a thing. A whole bunch of mediators in between. At some point he says that people have no body but the universe. He quotes a bunch of poets like Rilke and says something about headlessness is for sharing with people but for arguing about never. Okay, so <laughs> some analysis of this book. I hope somebody can elucidate this for me as something more valuable than I believe it to be. So positive things. Divestment of the ego. This is something that's extremely important that everybody should be taking on board, whether they are practitioners of Zen Buddhism or budding sociopaths. I don't care. Just take it on board that your ego doesn't matter so much. Our subjective psychology is not the end-all be-all, and I took that as one of the messages, at least, that was coming out of this book and there could be some kind of crazy chess game going on here you know like when you're reading a Nabokov novel where he's really saying a whole bunch of different things when you think he's saying a surface level thing and that could be happening I don't know but using methods to temper individual and temporary emotions that seemed to be one of the things that he discussed was a consequence of realizing he didn't have a head so that's that's a positive thing it mostly just sounds like a collective jerk off uh, this whole <laughs> discussion around the spirituality stuff and i know sam harris is a big proponent and i don't have much of a footing to be able to criticize any of this i'm not a buddhist i ha didn't spend 10 years studying sitting alone well i kind of did <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing quite a bit of that, actually. But apparently you have to do it in a particular way. And although a lot of this is derogatory and tongue-in-cheek, there are actually a lot of positive things that come out of Buddhism, so we'll get to some of that. There's a lot of the same religious gatekeeping that you hear from just your average run-of-the-mill religious people. If you don't accept it, then you just don't get it. There's a lot of vague language and a lot of big, lofty talk. I don't recall an ounce of humility from cover to cover <laughs> related to any of this. So that's the book. That's the book. The big picture, though. There's a difference between trying to understand and spread complex ideas and just trying to establish some vague positive or enlightened emotional response, trying to get that or elicit that from your reader or your listener. And it didn't feel like this book had any interest in trying to actually establish real, supported, and rigorously thought through ideas propositions memes it didn't seem like this author had an interest in that sort of a thing and explicitly says that headlessness isn't for arguing about so obviously there's a whole complexity uh, behind the concept of being able to impart ideas without being a mediator of those ideas. So there's, there's a whole bunch of really interesting stuff going on with how memes are transferred from person to person, how they change, what content is left over, what content is mutated by the filters of that person and all that stuff. So whatever true ideas that the author is trying to get across or whatever Buddhism 
tries to get across that isn't actually an empirical fact or something like that that it's trying to impart but something that is more speaking to the way that people understand things I mean I can see that to some degree but <laughs> ultimately it seems more like it's just a bunch of vague I'm super important I figured it out listen to me kind of stuff so I'm sure uh, this kind of thing it works for some primates I don't think it has much content and this isn't a discredit to me meditation in general I actually think that meditation has a whole bunch of positives and I've experienced positives from meditation I understand what Sam Harris talked about when he he talked about the proper way to meditate versus the improper way. And there are definitely distinctions between those states when you're trying to do it. But there are, are these layered aspects of parsing human psychology and reality and what you're actually learning or what learning is and whether any of this is beneficial or is actually referencing anything in reality. And so there's, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to all that. But all the super special feeling talk of oneness with the universe and all that nonsense it's just empty religious posturing as far as i can tell and whatever kind of talk you want to have about this about oh what the universe actually means it's always mediated the way that we have to experience it's mediated through our particular primate psychology so the moment you start revving up to get all these lofty ideas about something beyond that then unless you have just an incredible grasp and you can demonstrate it you know with show your work <laughs> then you're probably not saying much. So whatever the case, I mean, that's the on having no head. If you're into kind of broad spiritual talk, you probably enjoy it. But I would like a little more tethered discussion when it comes to this sort of stuff. So that <laughs> that's the last coffee house. That was that book. And that was the Sam Harris reading list. Uh, next, I'm not sure what we have coming up, but we're mixing between the Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, and Sam Harris reading list, as well as the literature stuff and some extra stuff on the side just why not and if you didn't realize it's left right and center is what, what i'm going for to get the whole perspective on everything that everybody knows thanks for listening and i will see you on the next one okay bye mm-hmm.